Hello and welcome to this webinar on AP 2019 resources and all of the new tools and supports that are available for AP teachers and students for the 2019-20 school year. My name is Claire Lorenz. I'm the Senior Director of AP Instruction here at the College Board and we want to thank the Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals for their partnership in recording this webinar today and getting it out to teachers. I'm going to transition into formative and summative assessments, um, knowing that these are going to start, uh, I'm going to start talking about the tools and supports and resources that are on AP Classroom. But before I dive into the actual system itself, um, we wanted to talk to you about the kinds of assessments that we offer here at AP. So when we think about assessments, we think about them according to a spectrum. On the left, more informal or formative type questions. And this could be something as simple as the questions you ask verbally to your students during class while you're teaching. Um, on the right hand side, we're talking about formal or summative um, questions. And that's what you would see at the end of a course, right? This is a state assessment. This is an end of course uh, ex graduation exam. This is the AP exam. Um, so up until this time, AP has put a lot of its focus into the AP exam. Um, and then what we've done is we teachers would like to that exam is we've released uh, former uh, AP exams themselves or official practice exams that were made in the spirit and likeness of an actual operational exam. And we've taken those questions in the past and we've put them on um, uh, the AP course audit. If they're uh, significantly older exams, they might be posted publicly on AP Central. And what teachers were kind of stuck doing was cutting questions out and pasting them on a piece of paper as they approached each one of those pieces of content throughout the course. Um, but what we've done now is we've created these uh, for more formative, informal assessments that are made to be used as you're teaching each topic and skill, so those what topic questions do. And then, then at the end of each unit, um, that's what the personal progress checks are made to do. And so we're hoping that at this point in the school year, since we're still early on, your main focus is on these particular sets of questions. Um, now, what we've done also is taken those released exams and those practice exams and put all of those questions in our AP question bank. And we know that um, a lot of teachers uh, are then more readily able to create their own assessments for students at various different points in the school year. But what you need to keep in mind is that these questions, the question bank is filled with questions that come from summative assessments, which means they are what we would consider, quote, may questions. They're meant to be given in May at the end of the course when students have mastered all of the content and skills. Sometimes questions ask students to compare different sets of content at different points in the course or they have they contain uh, a simple uh, content piece but a more advanced skill or vice versa. Um, and so we didn't want students to lose confidence by only being exposed to these types of questions early on in the school year, which is one of the reasons why we're suggesting that you spend a lot of your time here with the topic questions and personal progress checks because they are your September, October, November type questions. Um, one of the things that I've seen some teachers do is that they'll have taught content. Let's say um, I'm a U.S. history teacher and it's the end of September and I've gotten through uh, all of colonialism. And then they'll go to the question bank and they'll find a document-based question or DBQ on colonialism. And they'll give their students that that um, that full question, expecting them to write a coherent 
argument essay uh, that answers the AP question that's in front of them. Um, and then if students don't perform well, the assumption is that they don't know the content. But that may not be the case. It may be very well that students do know the content that you taught them, but they just didn't have the skills necessarily uh, to write a full DBQ argument essay. So those two things are at odds with each other. So students can't really show you what it is that they know about the content because the advanced skills get in the way and prevent them from doing that because they haven't had exposure to them yet. The topic questions and personal progress checks will allow you to test content with the appropriate level skill that has been taught alongside that content in the course. So let's talk, talk a little bit more about these questions. Um, topic questions are made for uh, you to check for understanding as you teach each topic and skill. So um, I've switched to, st uh, to statistics. I wanted to spread the love as much as I could here with uh, different courses. Um, so this is unit three, and I'm looking at topic 3.3, which I can see is hooked with skill 1C. Um, I'm still gonna have the same situation here as I've had in the other courses we've looked at. Um, the topic tells me the content, the skill tells me the skill I should teach alongside of it. This skill here is going to refer back to that skill chart, um, just like it did in all of my other courses. But what the topic question is also going to do is it is going to assess this content explicitly with this skill. So we're not telling you, hey, teach these two things together and then not showing you what it will look like on an assessment item. All of the assessment items that are uh, formative for this particular topic are going to test these two things together. So you can see exactly what that would look like as it's manifested on the exam. Um, You'll see this same type of setup that we looked at before for biology as you would for statistics. Uh, you're gonna see the same correlation, but I wanna point out this time that there is this button here or a link that will take you directly to the topic questions. Um, now, topic questions, again, are explicit to this topic content with these skills. They're gonna test those pairings, but here's why you should click on this link. When you click on this link, um, oops, let me, when you click on that link right there, it is going to take you to the question bank. Now you may say to me, Claire, you just mentioned that the question bank contains summative questions. Um, the question bank contains mostly summative questions and houses all the summative questions that we have to offer, but it also houses these formative topic questions. And we did that because you are allowed to assign topic questions as you wish. You can assign one at a time, two at a time, three at a time, one today, one tomorrow, one the next day. Um, and you can see, if I go back for a second, if I notice that this is the link for topic 3.3 and skill 1C, clicking on this link is going to pre-filter the question bank for me. So I don't have to do any of that work. It's gonna give me topic 3.3, skill 1C, and the tag for formative questions, meaning don't show me May questions, don't show me exam questions that came from an old exam. My students aren't ready for that yet. I want the, the formative questions. And so you can see exactly how this lines up. This 3.3, goes to, uh, you could see it lines in all of this topics here. Now I may have to make some deductions, right? This FRQ that's here has a lot that's from unit three, but also has some tags to unit seven. So I may not assign this question right away if I have not taught unit seven. Um, the skill 1C, you can see all the tags to 1C here. Um, I may wanna look at other skills. So if I've taught skill 4B before, which I may have, it may have been hooked to an earlier topic, then this question would be okay for me to give my students. But if I've not taught all of these skills, along with all of this content, I'm probably not assigning this FRQ to my students because they're not ready for it yet. Um, and again, you'll see the formative tag, okay? So here's an example of one. Um, 
whether or not you are uh, mathematically inclined or like math, um, this is a relatively uh, straightforward question from AP Statistics that tests that pairing. So here it is again, random, random sampling and data collection. Um, and skill 1C, and all students here had to do was describe an appropriate method for gathering and representing data. All of these choices are methods for gathering and representing data. Um, and you can see, uh, if you knew the right answer, there, even if you didn't, there is correlation also back to the required course content. So not only is there a focus on the skill, but there is focus on the, um, the content as well, and I can see that there's very much here on the essential knowledge a uh, definition for what a stratified random sample is. Um, once I'm into the system here, if I've assigned this on an exam, I can uh, see the question itself. This is the same exact question we just looked at uh, in AP Classroom. Uh, I can see what the right answer is. Um, and if a student answered the question incorrectly, they are going to be able to see the feedback or rationale as to why this answer choice that they picked was incorrect. Um, once a student uh, has completed the quiz or assessment and the teacher has uh, locked the assignment, students will be able to also click on all of the other answer choices here to see why the correct answer was the correct answer. So they can click here and see the correct rationale. Let's say they wanted to know why A wasn't the answer, they would be able to get that information too. Um, the other nice thing here is, let's say I've decided here that the problem was not that my student didn't know the content, maybe it's because they just didn't know how to select the right um, strategy, that which was the skill. If I forgot what the skill was, um, oops, let me go back, actually click questions, it's going to take me back to the question bank and give me everything in the question bank that is tagged to skill 1C. Now you have to be careful because some of these will be formative or early in the year questions and some of them will be summative. So if you only want a certain type of question, you would have to click on the assessment purpose and source button and filter, filter for the type of question that you would want. Um, but if you use the the point here being if you use the navigation within the system, you'll actually uh, discover some neat uh, time saving tips that will um, allow you to create more targeted ass assessments for your students. So topic questions can be assigned in a lot of different ways as homework before you teach a topic, as homework after you teach a topic, as a bell ringer, as an exit ticket, as pair work, as uh, a quiz after you've uh, like taught a couple of um, uh, um, topics and want to uh, like accumulate them together, you can do all of that. But no matter how you administer them, we really encourage you to review the data. In other words, make sure students can enable access um, and review the rationales, and then also take some time to figure out if there are any patterns in terms of students' misunderstanding so that you can better focus on the things where uh, they may be showing signs of struggle. Um, so just as a reminder, topic questions can be assigned as a set, all at once, uh, in parcels, um, and they can be assigned online or on paper. Um, teachers like the, the, the print option for topic questions, uh, but I will tell you this, if you assign them online and students take them online, they have much easier access to the rationales, which is really the time-saving feedback that we want you to be able to give to your students. So instead of spending time individually going over every question on a quiz or a test during class, students will be able to kind of self progress through the rationales and focus on the areas where they need to focus most. Um, so just so you can kind of see this up close, um, we talked earlier on about spiral and scaffolding and we get a lot of questions about do I have to teach the course in the order that you've presented it? So I wanna, I wanna make a plug as to why that's a good practice. Um, and we talked about how skills repeat, that's the spiral, and are 
progressive throughout the course, the scaffold. So if I take a course like environmental science um, and I look at practice one, which is basically uh, explaining concepts. I'm going to see how the skills progress, right? I have to be able to describe concepts and processes, explain process, uh, processes and concepts, and then explain those concepts and processes in applied context. So describe, explain, explain in applied context. I hope you can all agree that a student cannot do 1C unless they become adept at 1A and 1B. So what we'll see earlier on in the, the course is if I look at unit one, I'll see a, a question uh, that's hooked to skill 1A, and it'll very much get at this skill. It will say which of the following best describes a symbiotic relationship. So it is hooked to the topic, um, and uh, I can see that it actually uh, gets at describing uh, the, uh, sorry, it gets at the skill 1A that's hooked with here. Then I move on to unit two, and I'm going to see 1A again because we want students to have multiple opportunities to practice this skill. Um, so here you're going to see that the word describe is not necessarily in the question, but they're basically asking for a description about levels of biodiversity, um, which again aligns to the topic content, but still is aligned to the skill. As I go through, I'll then move on to let's say unit five. Unit five is now uh, has a topic hooked with skill 1B. 1B is explaining concepts. You're gonna see questions that actually use the word explain. Um, and then you'll see other questions, and here it is in unit six hooked with 1B again, where um, it doesn't actually ask for explain, but it's asking you kind of like, uh, why is this ex the case? Explain why this is the case. So it's kind of hidden there. Um, so you'll see the, the different versions of how this may be worded. And then finally, you're on later in the course, there are, uh, I believe, nine units in environmental science. You see here we are in unit eight, skill 1C is showing up. Um, explain in applied context and you're going to see a context described here and then they're going to ask why does something happen so here's the explain why um, and again here in unit nine you're going to see which of the following events would most likely lead to something it's again an applied context um, and 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 students have to understand why that would be the answer um, so hopefully um, you can see now there's a reason and a method for following the order because the skills will spiral throughout, meaning they repeat, but they also scaffold in a way that allows students to build foundational skills early so they can get to more complex skills later on. If you do something like teach unit nine at the very, very beginning of the course and you try to use our topic questions, you're going to find that students are going to be able, are going to be expected to work with skill 1C, which may not be helpful if you haven't taught them skill 1A yet. Um, so I'll go really quickly. Personal progress checks are kind of uh, uh, formed in the same way. If you go back to the um, course at a glance, you'll see there's a whole section here about uh, how you can use the progress checks to uh, show students where they might need to focus more of their attention or efforts. Um, if I look at the bottom of each column, you're going to see what types of questions I should expect here um, in statistics. So it should make sense to you that I will see an exploring data and collecting data type question and another collecting data type question in a unit called collecting data. Uh, so we've tried to align the types of questions with the unit that you're in. Um, and uh, there will be partial versions where applicable. The progress checks are going to be formed in the same way. So just like topic questions test the content and skill of a singular topic, uh, the personal progress check questions are going to test all of the content topics and then 
all of the skills. So you're going to see uh, questions that put 3, 1, and 1, A together, questions that put 3, 2, and 1, C together, 3, 2, and 4, A together. All of those will be on the same progress check so that we can show you after you've taught the whole unit where students still may be having some difficulties. Um, and there will be up to uh, three questions for each topic skill pairing. So uh, students have multiple opportunities to, to practice and we can give you some reliable feedback about where students may struggle. Um, you're going to see the progress checks at the end of each uh, the end of each unit on AP Classroom. Uh, in some cases, you may see multiple parts. So we've always separated the multiple choice from the free response questions. And we did that in case you didn't want to assign both of those parts at the same time. Um, where you'll see multiple parts means that all of those questions together would have taken students longer than 45 minutes to do. So on the chance that you are actually working with a 45 minute class period, we didn't want you to assign a part of a progress check and have students run out of time. So we've separated the question so that students um, are able to complete each part within a 45 minute class period. It does not mean each one of these parts is going to take a full 45 minutes. It just means that putting all of them together would take longer than 45 minutes. Um, so you may look at this and say, well, I don't have three class periods to devote to doing this in class, and that is okay. So maybe you decide you're going to give multiple choice part A um, in class, and maybe you give part B for homework, and then you give FRQ as an assignment later on. Um, maybe you give MCQ part A and part B during class, and FRQ becomes homework. Or maybe you're working with a 90-minute class period, and you want to give all of this in class, is to simulate a, a, a real testing experience and that's totally fine too so you have flexibility students can do this online um, uh, sorry in class or at home um, I should mention that the multiple choice progress check questions and it's referenced right here uh, are the only sets of questions that you cannot print out so they must be given been online and we did that for a couple of reasons one is so that students would have immediate access to the feedback provided by the rationales and the other is so that you as the teacher have the data associated with that because we didn't want you to have to go back and enter all of the students responses for all of these multiple choice questions for all of the sections that you teach into the computer so um, these multiple choice questions have to be given online but they can be given on a computer a tablet a smartphone uh, the system is optimized to be used on all of those platforms so students can use their own device um, or they can use a, a, a shared laptop cart um, at school uh, whatever you have access to and these can also be done at home if need be um, so again as a reminder progress checks should be assigned at the completion of each unit um, it's going to mean that uh, you want to also score student responses and enter scores for any FRQs that you may um, assign because those will have to be graded by hand uh, but no worries we've given you uh, scoring guidelines in which to do that um, and then again you want to review that data uh, have students look at rationales review class misunderstandings and then you know try to figure out how that data Data influences your future instructional decisions. Um, you cannot break up the questions in a progress check. If you want bite-sized questions, that's what the topic questions are for. Um, progress checks have to be assigned as a full set so that we can give you meaningful data about student understanding. Um, the MCQ must be given online, but the FRQ can be um, uh, assigned online uh, or be printed and assigned on paper. Um, I'm going to put this caveat here. Uh, it is in our CED, um, but it often gets misinterpreted. So um, I'm going to I'm going to review it here. Uh, this basically says personal progress checks, and by default, also topic questions, um, because they are formative. The results of these assessments cannot be used to evaluate teacher effectiveness 
or assigned as letter grades to students. Um, and the reason that we say that is twofold. First of all, we want you as teachers to feel safe in terms of assigning these to your students. They are meant to assess progress, not as assign any value to what, um, uh, to how students are going to do on the actual AP exam or how good your teaching is or anything like that. They are literally a tool to monitor student progress and to better target instruction. But as a result, we also want students to see these as low stakes. We don't want them to feel like they have to cheat on them or they have to copy a, a friend's homework or something like that. This is really for them. Um, and we want them to get a better picture about what they really understand and what they don't. Um, and so when these types of things are contributing to a student's overall course grade, we know that that heightens the stakes and makes students feel like they can't be honest about what they know and what they don't know. And so we're taking that away. And you can feel free to give participation grades or a homework grade, either you did it or you didn't do it, uh, to students. That That is all okay. But what we don't want to have happen is a, a student to score a 6 out of 10, let's say, on the progress check and have a teacher uh, average of 60% into their grade book for that student. Because in most schools, a 60% is a failing grade. But 60% of the questions correct or the total number of points on the AP exam could be, if consistently performed, um, show that a student is on their way to earning a qualifying score. Um, we don't know. And so we don't want to fail a student that could be uh, on their way to doing well. Um, and, and again, we want to take that high stakes away uh, from students so that they will use the progress checks and topic questions in the way that they are meant to be used. Um, and then really quickly, uh, the question bank, which contains those May questions, uh, can be filtered in a lot of different ways um, by topic, by skill, by question type, um, by how well it aligns to the exam. Uh, so if a course has been redesigned and you want uh, items that are perfectly aligned to the way it currently uh, will appear in the spring of 2020, uh, you'll want to select perfect here. If you don't care about that, you can kind of leave it blank or select everything that's there. Um, you can see we've actually uh, defined all of those alignments here. Uh, know that we kept some minimally aligned questions because it could be that the content is still tested or the skill is still tested, but you won't see the question in the exact way that it's being presented. Uh, so be careful. Like um, You may want to weed some of those questions out uh, when you're first assigning these to, to students. Uh, but there is some instructional value there, so we kept them. You can also preview the questions. The questions are going to uh, come up on screen. This uh, little button on the right that says question details is actually going to tell you a whole lot about the question. First of all, it's going to give you the right answer, but it is also going to tell you what parts of the, of the course framework it's aligned to. In other words, what required content is this lined up with? What skill is it lined up with? Um, it, how well is it aligned to the exam? Is it part of a set? Um, um, is it from a publicly available test? Like, w there's a lot of information here that you can get about this question. Um, you can also then add them to a, an assessment. If I've used a question before, it will come up as orange, so I know that I've assigned it before. Um, and I can add questions, move them around, delete questions, and then save any assessment that I want for my students. And then finally, um, our progress dashboard is going to be able to give you information about personal progress checks across all uh, uh, subjects and all um, uh, sections that you teach. So you can hear, see here I have two sections, period one, period eight. Uh, you can see I've assigned the first two progress checks to my students in period eight, but only uh, the one in period one. If I click on the cell, it will actually tell me what comprises that score. Um, it's an average for all of my students. Here I can see that there are two multiple choice parts that contribute to that, and I can see how students did on each individual part. Um, the same thing here for period uh, for unit two. 
um, I can then click on the period and it will give me breakdown by student. So uh, if I scroll all the way down, it will see, give me all of my students uh, and I click on a particular student score. Uh, it will tell me that uh, Michael Shanks here took MCQ part A, got a nine out of 18. But the reason uh, he's kind of coming up in yellow there is because he didn't take the second part. Uh, so th that would be information I would probably want to know.